Well, good morning, everybody. To get us started today, I wanted to look at this morning's uh, all hazards weather map by the National Weather Service. And I'm sure your eyes drawn to the large area here uh, coming out of Colorado, going through the plains up toward the upper Midwest, where we have a large region of winter storm warnings. We have winter weather advisories surrounding this. And there's a load that's coming out of Colorado today that's going to help uh, produce all this snow. And there's going to be some very heavy snowfall through parts of Colorado, Nebraska into this section of Iowa. We'll take a look at the totals in a second. To the south of this low, very strong winds are going to be coming out of New Mexico and Texas. This is a large area of red flag warning in Texas. I do expect uh, winds to be 30 to 50 miles an hour and we could have uh, some blowing uh, sand and dust out of this as well. Stronger winds are expected in the lower Mississippi River Valley today too as the storms do come through this area. I'll show you the winds in just a few seconds. But we do have a pretty dense fog uh, setting up early this morning over parts of the southeast. Now, while this system is rolling across the central United States, there is a front attached to a deep low that's going way up into British Columbia. And that front, as it kind of comes in here to the west, is in uh, increasing the chances for snow throughout the Cascades and the down to the Sierra Nevada and the interior uh, of the northwest in this, in this particular section of the Rockies as well. So uh, we got two things to be keeping an eye on here in the very near term. Now, I know a lot of folks watching this are going to want to get some idea on the snowfall totals. And I was a bit surprised this morning on how aggressive the National Weather Service was with the snowfall totals. This comes from the National Digital Forecast Database. You can see about eight inches from Denver stretching into some places in central Nebraska that have a high probability of picking up over a foot of snow, maybe even uh, more than that. Uh, there's quite a bit of liquid in this, so I do expect snowfall totals to be relatively high. Uh, but just use the map to kind of, uh, as guidance, I would say, for finding where the heaviest snow pattern or heaviest snowfall is going to be. Uh, certain, like I said, the National Digital Forecast Database is likely the most aggressive I've seen on snowfall totals across Nebraska. This is important, by the way. This is returning moisture uh, to an area that, of course, last year was incredibly dry. And uh, some of it, while it needs, of course, I'd like to see it get farther to the south here in Kansas, this is still just great for the water health in the central part of the United States. Now, taking a look at those winds, this is the midday wind field. So you can see the low emerging right in through here. And behind that front, very strong winds uh, coming off of the, um, you know, off of the, the, the desert southwest. As you look at this, I actually want you to identify two fronts. There's one that runs right in through here, and there's a second one that's right out there. So this is the upper level front. That's what's going to initiate the storms tonight over the lower Mississippi River Valley. But the cold front is actually on the back side right in through here. So this is our midday wind field, and again, this will be an area we'll watch for uh, blowing sand and dust and also the risk of wildfires as uh, 30 to 50 mile an hour gusts are possible here. On the severe weather side of it, the Storm Prediction Center is keeping a very close eye from eastern Texas through Louisiana, Mississippi, western Tennessee, Kentucky, and down to the boot hill of Missouri and Arkansas. So keep a close eye out this area. Watch the radar later today because as we see in the forecast, there is again a risk of some quite strong storms there. So let's pick this up with the high res NAM. 8 o'clock this morning. So again, our lowest forming here. This is the front I mentioned coming into the Pacific Northwest. So playing through the middle of today, there is that line of possible storms. We could see some embedded supercells ahead of this. There is decent wind shear that could promote that. But um, a cold rain kind of spreads throughout parts of Missouri and then into Illinois and Indiana. And then on the back side of it, we're going to watch for the conversion of snow. There is the risk of some ice in this, as we've been talking about all week with the overrunning setup right in this area. But you'll see snow if I kind of rock back and forth uh, throughout the day in Colorado, but really through parts of uh, Nebraska into tonight, and then Iowa, southern Minnesota, and Wisconsin as we get into tomorrow morning. So this low quickly spreads to the northeast. This is the front. It's kind of losing some of its punch just because of the way this system is kind of uh, stacking up as it gets over parts of the uh, Great Lakes here. But we do see the risk of some ice initially in parts of New England, and then rain that follows it. Now that front as it kind of heads towards the Appalachian Mountains and gets into the Mid-Atlantic of the Carolinas has broken up. Again, I told you it kind of loses its upper level support and as a consequence, we, we don't see much precipitation out of this. But if we just take you back, I just wanted to show you that by uh, late this afternoon, that front that I mentioned coming with the deeper low over the Hudson Bay is coming right in through here, uh, hitting the Cascade Mountains, moving into the Columbia Basin, into Central Oregon, and spreading some snow into Northern California and Nevada. Expect to see some of that snow tomorrow morning throughout parts of the Snake River Valley as this low kind of settles in to parts of Nevada and Utah. So that kind of gets us out there with the latest update from the, um, from the NAM. We're going to keep a close eye on this system here going into the weekend. 
Now, I want to just give you a bigger picture on what we're expecting to see here over the next week. There's split flow in the Gulf of Alaska, and as a result, we see a drier pattern emerging for much of the western United States. That means that the systems are going to try to kind of come in like this and dive into the four corner states and then eject, kind of following some sort of trajectory like this. That's our kind of new setup. A lot of the precipitation you see here is coming from the first system we just talked about. But from parts of the Mid-South, uh, Southern Mississippi River Valley, the Southeast along the Gulf Coast and into New England, we actually see quite a bit of wet weather that's coming. And this is gonna be very important, especially to see how far back to the West this precipitation gets. Because as we've been discussing, you know, over the last 30 days, there are places in here that have seen no precipitation. There's pockets throughout the Mid-South and along the, the coast here in Florida that have been extremely dry as well. Plus, returning some better moisture into Montana is a possibility with this pattern too. So this is why we're watching this uh, so carefully. To explain that pattern, I'm going to go to the GFS Ensemble just as an example. The Europeans in agreement with this. Just to show you that we're watching these troughs develop, move across the country. This is the current winter storm. That one goes over the eastern Great Lakes, but you can see the influence of this broader ridging here off the west coast. So by Saturday, remember, remember we talked about that low coming through parts of Utah. It's the one that digs down here and kicks off a system early next week that moves into New England. And then it's followed by another piece of the jet stream that dips down into a trough right in through here early next week. And that one's not only going to bring in some colder air, but really just increase the likelihood of pulling out that moisture from the Gulf of Mexico and delivering those heavy rains we saw. As we spread this sun out and just go out there to you know the end of this month, we notice that we do have kind of ridges flanking North America, one here and one here. And that's gonna help display some cooler air into the central United States. We'll take a look at those temperatures in a few moments. I normally like to show you the ECMWF, but they had a data distribution problem this morning, and the new model run were coming in while I was recording this uh, early this morning. But the GFS actually has a, I think it has a good handle on this pattern. So let's just take a look at it uh, this morning. So GFS, we've already seen through the first system exiting through New England. Let's now watch that second system coming out of the four corner states right in through here. So you're gonna notice that through Saturday, getting into early Sunday morning. That low comes from the four corner states and emerges and heads toward Missouri right there. Could see some very heavy rain to the south of this low and some snow again spreading over a very similar region although currently being forecast a bit farther to the south. We have seen the latest forecast trends for each of these systems push that snow farther to the north so we'll keep an eye on this. But this low then moves through the mid-south delivers another round of heavy rain. This is Saturday into Sunday, stretching from the lower Mississippi River Valley into parts of the Mid-Atlantic and the Carolinas. That could be a big precipitation producer there. What is very difficult to figure out is if the model does have a handle on the lowest position here, suggesting we could get some heavy snow into parts of Ontario, Quebec, and then into the interior of New York. But remember, the systems are coming in like this. So the next one, see it here? This is on Saturday, coming into Montana, coming out of Alberta and Saskatchewan. This is one that could spread some snow in Montana. And again, where does it end up forming? Out of New Mexico, through Texas, and then following that same trajectory toward New England. That is our new weather pattern going forward here for the next, let's call it eight to 10 days. Now details are still yet to kind of emerge on what this next system is gonna do. It's way out there in the forecast, but there is some ensemble support for it as you saw a few moments ago. In terms of snow, this is the probability of getting six inches over the next 10 days. I just went back to the European model to grab this. So this is our corridor today, but notice from the Great Lakes into the interior of New England, there are definitely some chances of picking up some heavy snow. And this is important because this has been an area so far this year that's in deficit in total snow, except for the Great Lake snow, uh, Lake effect snow bands here. So to see better snowfall coming into New England, I think is gonna be an important forecast. It will be interesting to see if we can get systems to dip a bit farther to the south to fill in this hole as well. Uh, and remember, we are going to a drier pattern in the west, so it's, to be honest, a very good thing we saw as much precipitation in the west as we did uh, so far this year. Okay, probability of at least an inch. Just wanted to bring you up to speed on that map before we start talking about uh, temperatures. I mean, there's no doubt that the beginning of this new year has been uh, near record warm for a lot of people. You're looking at um, 
average temperature ranks by climate district. It's a great map from Iowa State University uh, showing there's a lot of single digits on this map representing you know, a top five, top 10 warmest start to any year on record going back to 1893. Well, those temperatures over the next few days, well, let's just kind of walk through them quickly here. Here's Wednesday's forecast high temperatures. This is incredible. You know, parts of western Kentucky, Tennessee, Mississippi, and, and um, Arkansas here might crack 70 today. Very warm. And this, again, is the warm sector that's opening up for the strong to severe storms. Well, that's going to push into the Ohio Valley tomorrow and Thursday. Not quite as warm, but still very warm compared to normal. We still, even though we go into the weekend cooler, we're still technically above average with respect to these high temperatures. But you notice going into Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday, as those deeper troughs dive in here, we're seeing a better signal for colder air establishing itself from the west into the central United States. And that's why the day five through 10 starts to show the presence of that colder air and how it will eventually begin to move its way uh, toward the east. The newest update here as we finish the month of January and start February does show, again, a pretty robust signal for cold air from the Canadian prairie through much of the central plains Midwest and the Rocky Mountains. The holdout for warm air will be this corridor east of that line, and that's largely due to a subtropical ridge that's sitting here, preventing these troughs from just really digging and ejecting uh, up the east coast. So this will be our last holdout for some warmer air. Lastly, I want to turn my attention to South America. I'm going to play for an animation here. This is the last week's worth of global precipitation. But as we mentioned, there were isolated storms that came through Argentina. This is our major drought area in South America. And at the end of this animation, I want you to watch right there. See that? These were the storms that came through last night, delivering in some places some much needed rain. It was not widespread coverage, but it was storms. We saw storms popping on the heat of the day here. And the newest long-range forecast data just continued to suggest that once we get into this weekend and beyond, there is a better chance of seeing above normal rains for much of Argentina. That's been a strong trend we've kept an eye on uh, for the last five to, to seven days here. We can also see that central Brazil is wetter. The question is going to be, while we see drier conditions in Brazil's northern growing areas, is that really a signal that is going to last going into February and beyond? Um, at this point, I think it's transient, but I'll watch for it to continue to develop. In the near term, it's not necessarily a bad thing as we're harvesting soybeans and planting corn in this particular area. So we'll keep watching it. I'll talk to you again tomorrow. Thanks.